Welcome to another episode of the Africa podcast. Our special guest today is Lina Mirhij, who is a visual storyteller and an expert in graphic narration. She's taught at several universities in Beirut and is the founder and director of the Story Center, which offers professional trainings, animation, illustration, and comic books. She was the director of the Beirut Animated Festival and worked with Tosh Fesh uh, to promote com comics and animation in Arab countries. Lina has illustrated over 25 Arabic children's books and has exhibited her work both locally and internationally and is the co-founder of Samandal Comics. Lina, uh, welcome to Afikra. Thank you so much. Uh, this is so exciting. Uh, thank you for hosting me or uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about comics in the Arab countries. You know, it's funny. Um, I wanted to ask you, I was just on my, like, as I was setting up, I was thinking about it and I was the the first time we spoke, the impression that you left on me was that you're so un, unassuming. Um, and I wonder if you have a sense of how much of an influence you and some of your generations of illustrators have had on illustrators in Lebanon and across the region. I mean, do you have a sense of that? Do you feel like that there are generations of folks who are consider themselves visual storytellers and reference your work directly and think, ah, oh, yeah, Lina Mirhij is like, a, is a inspiration. Do you have a sense of that? Um, honestly, from my teaching, because I've taught so many years, so I know from my students, but uh, I think that uh, the outreach of our comics, uh, the presence of our comics and bookstores, I do it is left, so... I wonder, eh, you know, Anna, I think that uh, the outreach is mostly among students or maybe artists or people who are concerned with visual culture. Uh, but I wish that uh, it could be wider and it could reach uh, people who don't know Samanda and who don't read comics usually and uh, who don't um, have a sense of what, uh, what visual culture is about. Yeah. Eh. I was watching this this uh, lecture that you gave, and you put up on the screen um, one of the first the first comic strip you ever wrote, or the first illustration. I think it must have been to your sister Zena. Uh, probably, or, uh, probably she's my best friend. Your best I consider friend. Consider her as my sister. Yes, uh, and, sister sisterhood among women. Yani. Sah, and, yeah. Um, I was wondering yeah. what are some of the what are some of the earliest memories that you have of um, you know visual storytelling or comics um, from your childhood. Um, so um, uh, when I was maybe seven or eight, I had to read in the summer um, a very um, an Arabic book. Who, uh, the quality of the book was very bad, and I remember that very, very well. Uh, I remember um, I mean, how upset I was because of the, the quality of the illustrations, the quality of the paper, and the papers were all, I, mean, I could remove the papers from the book, and I felt, you know, I felt the poverty of it and the disrespect towards the, the reader. Whereas uh, my uncle used to send us books from France that were like, all colorful and with, uh, with nice, shiny um, illustrations. But for comics, I remember going to my, my, my uncle's house, uh, Amal Chaman, who used to have uh, some uh, uh, obelisks and asterisk. And, uh, well, of course, I couldn't read them and not, uh, I couldn't understand French. So, um, yeah, I could understand the ha-ha-ha and all the expressions and the... The, the icons and the, and, the, and the balloons and all of that. And that gave me a sense of uh, what could be to read a visual story. Uh, yeah. Um, when did you start uh, drawing? Do you, and like, not only sort of doodling, when did you say, this is not just doodling, this is actually art or this is something serious? I have to say, I was so lucky to be in a school where we had an art teacher, Greta Naufet, she's a big artist, uh, and she was always uh, bringing into class some new ideas and new um, uh, adventures. So she introduced us to comics and she asked us to do comics. Uh, 
she did some competitions in school. And I remember maybe when I was 12 or 13, I won one of the competitions. And I was surprised. I didn't know that I had this quality, this, uh, um, I, that I didn't know that I had this in me. And I was really happily surprised. And uh, after that, uh, many of my classmates asked me to do their drawings as well. Uh, my little sister as well. We, we had to draw um, um, Bible stories from our school. I was in Collège Protestant and we had one uh, Bible class every day. <laughs> every week that we had to draw the scene that she would uh, of the story that she would tell so i did it for me and then my sister who's three years younger uh, asked me to do it for her as well so i had to draw the these images of the bible twice uh, when i was growing up amazing (laughs) um uh, it's 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 just such an interesting subject matter (laughs) <laughs> I think so, yeah. For 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 um, I think for artists, it probably it's a good way to to start with uh, with these basics, yeah. What is it yeah. to draw a scene of people in a desert? What is it to draw a, a scene of uh, with with the horses, with trees? I remember drawing a really nice tree, tra- cherry tree, and uh, putting all the details of the cherries and the. And the leaves, and uh, looking, um, researching that so that I could draw it in a good way. Yeah, I want to um, jump a little forward, and then I want to sort of work backwards and introduce people who are not familiar with Samandal um, to you know what it is. Um, it's for sure something that is a huge part of uh, Beirut's, like the world in Beirut for sure, um, and. I wonder if it's something that you can just sort of give a background. You know, what is it? What is this organization, this collective of people? What are you guys publishing? Uh, what does it mean? Um, and where did the idea come from? Uh, Samantha started in 2007. Uh, we, had, we had thought, uh, me and three colleagues, Omar Khouri, Hafid Imam, and Fazi Baqi, the Feds, uh, of a magazine where we could publish our comics, where we could publish comics and read comics. And we had been thinking about it for a year or two, and uh, uh, Omar Khouri uh, was coming down from the mountains and from the, from the north, and uh, um, on the street he saw a salamander, a salamander. And he thought, well, this would be a great idea because the salamander is an amphibian between the earth and the uh, and the sea, like comics between the picture and text, uh, between the high art and the low art, the experimental and the and the low, the, the popular art, and we thought um, to use to use it as a as a name for the magazine, and then slowly we started to think, okay, brainstorm, how we, could we do a magazine that could be sustainable in a place where there is no magazine, there are no not a lot of comic artists who are doing comics. How can we bring other people to, to start doing as well? So we thought of the, this formula to, to have an open call, for, open call for submission and to invite whoever we know uh, from, our, uh, from our friends, from our colleagues, but also uh, from Lebanon, from uh, Arab countries. And uh, later on, when we discovered festivals and we started traveling to, to um, introduce the Mandel, we also opened it to the international. Uh, from the beginning, we opened it. Uh, but yes, we had more and more uh, people from abroad who also contributed. And we thought that um, Samandal would be um, a platform where uh, people would, uh, would make comics, would start to make comics, but also learn how to make comics. Um, I, I was an amateur in comics. I studied graphic design, but I had never done real comics before. So it was also for us a learning process. Uh, we, uh, Omar and Omar was coming from an illustration background, so of course he knows a little bit better than us. But Hatim and I and Fids, we were in, in graphic design and we knew how to make books. Uh, and uh, of course, making comics then was quite challenging. What are some of the challenges? I mean, like that might sound like a stupid question, but like, um, what are some things that somebody like me might not expect are challenges? And give me give me the year again. When is this happening? Two thousand and seven. Okay, right after the war. Yes, 
So the, the, the first challenge I would say is um, uh, notoriety. Are we, uh, are we good enough and do we know enough about comics to judge and, uh, and uh, decide who gets in and who, gets out, get, uh, who doesn't? Um, also, the challenges, of course, were um, everything related to, uh, to the administration. We were artists and we didn't know uh, how to open an organization, uh, where to get the money from, uh, uh, all the other details that uh, involve uh, the collective. Is, this, is there any um, uh, significance to 2007? What happened? Is it related to the, the war, the uh, July war and some sort of um, need to have an outlet to start expressing yourselves or um, was this cooking for a while, this idea? It was cooking for a while, but of course in 2006, we saw a lot of a solidarity among people in Beirut and among uh, uh, different artists. There were a lot of uh, different coalitions. Uh, there was a feel for pioneering and to start something new. Uh, uh, there was something uh, very hopeful in the air. Um, I think that was a that was a push for us, uh, and yeah. we had also just graduated, and we wanted to not really just graduated, but uh, or, you know, graduated, established something for our work, and then we had some time to to put in some andal and to start something uh, something like that. I was doing children's books for a while, and uh, I felt like I wanted to be an author as well. With children's books, I was an illustrator. And I felt like I didn't really have the tool to, to, to write children's books, uh, particularly with publishers in Lebanon. So do you feel like there's a legacy of uh, comics and sort of graphic illustrators and visual storytellers across the Arab world um, before 2006 that you were plugging into? Or was this pioneering work that you're like, oh, you know, nobody's doing this in Arabic? No, of course, we were plug plugging into a huge uh, culture. I mean, the, comics, uh, the first comic festival that started in Lebanon was in 88, right before, you know, before the war ended. Wow. Uh, and then when I was growing up, I remember going to Fotoskop and different uh, uh, book fairs and uh, seeing uh, comics at the French Cultural Center. They had uh, a Bradry du Livre where they had a lot of comics. Um, uh, Parazi, Nadine Parazi had a bookstore dedicated for comics, but the production of comics was not there. Uh, of course, there was a magazine before, uh, for instance, uh, Jad Workshop, they were doing uh, comics during the war. In 2000, there was a magazine called Zero. Um, also, they were doing something, but then they stopped. So they, they started a few years and then they stopped. So at the time when we started, there was no publication. Uh, um, but also, it was a publication that was uh, uh, plus 18. So directly, we wanted it to be uh, something where we, we, we would not have to face uh, censorship or directly we would say for the, for the reader that we are doing something for the plus 18. So mm, that also yeah. we can have a space to, to, to express whatever we want. Yeah. And where, you know, where are you finding all these comics going back then? Like in the f sort of first couple of issues, you said part of it, the challenge is like curating, like, are, do we even know what go what's good and bad? Where were you finding all these people? Um, so, um, of course, we, yeah, the internet uh, in 2008 uh, was growing. Everybody was going, getting on Facebook. Facebook was our tool, uh, was a very big tool for us to, to do the outreach. Um, but also we invited people from abroad to come and lecture us about making comics, about uh, storytelling, um, to give us different workshops uh, to experiment. We did a, a remixing workshop where we remixed the, the images of other people from the magazine and did more comics with them. Um, cool. We did a kind of a workshop where we did a crossword with the comics. Um, so I guess the... The artist community in Lebanon uh, also showed, showed a lot of interest. And uh, when we did these workshops, there was a lot of the, there was people who came, there were people who came who, who, uh, that engaged in the magazine and with us. Uh, and this is how also we, we, uh, we gained new members uh, 
and the, the membership in Samandal became uh, varied. Um, so um, since the beginning, we, we knew that Samandal would be an inclusive space uh, for comic artists and for comics, uh, comic stories. Yeah. How many, how many editions have you guys done? I think it's like 11. Um, for the, for the open call for submission, we did the, the beginning 15, but now we are on the number 18. We are working on it. We relaunched Amazing. three years ago, the open call for submission after stopping for quite some time because we were focusing on anthology books. So the anthology books, they are now five books. The sixth one is coming out soon. Um, and we, we also started doing, uh, author, author books. So, uh, uh, single books. I, I was lucky to, to receive a fund from Afak in 2011 and to publish a, a story in Gamba Laban, who was uh, in chapters, who was published in chapters in the Samandals. So that was yeah. the first one. And then Omar Khouri published Utopia. It's a really nice story about two uh, girls uh, who are playing, but uh, all the undertone is about the the, situa- the political situation in Lebanon. They want to build a new, re- a new republic, and then they start to discuss together what are the different uh, means to do that. Um, in 2019, we also had a huge push because we, we won two big prizes, uh, the, um, the UNESCO Sharjah Prize and the prize from France, from the Angoulême. Yeah. And we, with that, we wanted to create a collection of, uh, of books uh, from authors. And we started with the books of um, Mazen Kirbej. The, the book is called Antoine. It's a serial now. Yeah. Amazing. Um, okay, so I want to talk about some, uh, another organization that I think people think they're the same thing. And okay. which is uh, What What, right? Uh-huh. So what so is the difference? That? What What is our edition? It's, uh, it's, it is the Samandel, but What What is targeted towards the under 18. And this is why we wanted uh, to make a clear distinction between what is Samandel and what is What What. Yeah. Uh, what What, the concept started in 2018, 19, beginning of 19. And uh, uh, we wanted to create a collection for the youth so that they can read comics in Arabic and to create a new generation of comic artists and readers. Uh, that was the aim. And uh, for this, the collection is all, uh, all in Arabic, in different uh, uh, colloquial, uh, um, uh, classical, and also different uh, dialects, Arabic, uh, Lebanese, Egyptian, Syrian. Um, we wanted to create a varied uh, collection so that we can, also, we can reach the, the youth. And so this is why, you know, we have an Instagram for what what and we have an Instagram for, for Samandal. Do you feel like they are actually two different readerships? Because I have a feeling, I feel like everyone who reads Samandal also reads what what. Uh, I think yes, but I don't think that the people who read what what can read Samandal because yeah. it's for, for the plus 18. Now, we, we when I, I mean, we, we, um, we added them as uh, two public, all public uh, comics. Mm. Uh, of course, I still read the uh, Tintin and the uh, Asterix and Obelix. I still read the uh, Jeunesse comics. Uh, mm. I read both. But uh, I think that uh, it's important for the youth to know that there are comics dedicated for them. It's important for the parents to know that there are comics dedicated for the youth. Uh, that is that are that is the. Uh, 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 that were reviewed by uh, uh, people in pedagogy and uh, uh, linguists, people who know in, in Arabic. Uh, in Samandal, we are more free to do, uh, to do whatever we want. I want to talk about um, the language. Um, it seems important to you um, that this is in Arabic. Um, why? Uh, comics in French and English are everywhere. Uh, yeah. but however, comics in Arabic, this is uh, something rare. And I think it's important. Um, I'm someone who struggled a lot with my Arabic. Uh, and my mom is German, so she could not follow up with, uh, with my teaching. So yeah, I, I, had, I had an issue with, uh, with learning Arabic uh, 
even though I love the, the language in class, I love uh, listening to my teachers speak about it and explain. But then when I would go home, I wouldn't know how to, where to start and what to, how to, what to understand. And that I, uh, that's something I lacked. And this is why, and that I told you the book that I had when I was a kid, uh, this terrible book. You know, I know that there is a lack, there is a need for uh, books in Arabic that are of quality and that bring uh, uh, stories of quality. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm curious, what are you up to these days? And then I want to go back to some of the the um, the work that you've been doing, uh, the work that you've did uh, uh, with children's books and sort of uh, during the war as well. But uh, I'm curious, uh, what what are you doing these days? Um, I'm working with uh, some friends in, uh, in Gaza to work on a, a comics program uh, to to work with uh, youth um, for um, and to develop comics with them. Uh, but as well, I was in Cairo Comics uh, a few months ago, I think in November, and I was uh, presenting a book that I. Uh, drew from uh, um, uh, from a very old text that is about 800 years, and it's a it's a book that is called "Hadathatni uh, Wakalat Likul Mraatin Abbasia Siratuha." She said, uh, she told me and said, every every Abbasid woman uh, has a, her uh, story, and uh, this is a book where the, the poetry. Uh, the text is very old, so I had to uh, work around the text and make the the, the comics with the with the text that is uh, that is very old and fill the gaps with the images of the of the text that was not uh, very clear. And with that, I used margins to explain also the text uh, and elucidate all the the vocabulary that was not clear, the the expressions that were not clear. Um, so with that. Yes, we, we published it with Mahrusa in, uh, in Egypt. Um, along with that, I'm working with a French publisher, Dago. We are working on a, with a, with a uh, French uh, Lebanese uh, author, uh, Salim Nasib, and he wrote a book called uh, uh, Le Genie de Beirut, and it's about a period uh, right before the war and right after the war. Uh, in a small uh, neighborhood in the in downtown Beirut, uh, that was uh, diverse and had people from all uh, different places. Uh, um, yes. Where do these um, or, or rather, the way you approach these types of projects now in twenty twenty three, um, would they have been very different than the way you would have approached them in two thousand seven or eight? I mean. Given your skill set and your experience, and and uh, you know um, the years and sort of new perspectives, do you have a new way of approaching these types of projects? I have to say that uh, the way I was working before was to the focus was to tell the story. Uh, I was uh, impatient to tell the story. I wanted it to, uh, straight to come out, but also because we. We didn't really have the time. I didn't dedicate my time for comics. It was always something on the side. Uh, we worked on Samandal probably uh, two weeks every three months. So um, to produce the comics, we also did uh, a lot of the comics uh, in 24-hour uh, comics. So that also helped me to produce. Yeah. Um, so the, the stress was really on the in-betweens, in-between the images and how I can unfold them. Whereas now I think that uh, I have the time to invest in each image and uh, to give it uh, the time it needs so that it can be done and then uh, unfold it so that it can tell a story. And I think this is a huge difference uh, um, because now I can see that, um, that uh, uh, telling, is not, uh, telling is as important as showing. Uh, so uh, the reader would look, but also would read, but also would look at the images. And that is something that I, I think is very important now. So you're, you're in Beirut, I'm in Beirut. And um, over the last couple of years, there's been this enormous brain drain 
and th the draining was happening before then. And then obviously after 2019, 2020, um, that's been accelerated because of the economic crash and because of the uh, explosion. Um, what is sort of the state of the, the scene here today? Um, have you noticed, do you feel like we're still producing as many artists and, and people who are producing this type of work um, locally as before, or does it feel like, where did everybody go? <laughs> where did everybody go? <laughs> I think both. Uh, I was happily surprised to uh, see online the Maza magazine, and I want to go and get their issues and meet them uh, very soon, actually, and see what are the different collectives that are doing something today in Beirut. I think that there are small initiatives and uh, that they need support uh, so that they could stay and grow and um, gain experience from what they started. Um, wow. So, yes, I think, I, I mean, I, I'm 45 years old now and I've seen Lebanon, people go and leave. And uh, when I finished uh, university school, a lot of people uh, left. When I finished university, a lot of people left. But also a lot of people came back and there were, you know, all these, this leaving also means also starting fresh, uh, doing pioneering, uh, creating new projects, uh, uh, meeting new people. All this is, I think, uh, hopeful. And I have a lot of hope. I'm planning also to come back to Beirut uh, very soon. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, like through Afikra, I've, I've had the privilege of being able to interview all these people who have done all this pioneering work, you know? Um, and it's always harrowing to see when they started it and and what they had to endure and what issue number one and issue number two and issue number 10 and issue number 11 and issue number 100 looks like and how how much it changes. I mean, when you think about your work, are you, do you say, I'm 45 and I'm working on some andal number 18, inshallah, I will be 75 and working on some andal, uh, you know, 100. Do you, is, that, is that sort of the... Maybe aspiration isn't isn't the wrong word, but sort of the the feeling is that the hope. I think I think that uh, Samandal definitely has to stay. Uh, maybe not with me or my generation. Maybe new generations. Uh, um, I'm I'm not, uh, yes I I don't think I I am thinking on it uh, that much. But I I since the, since since my studies, I also liked animation and. Uh, um, I like children's books and with the, what, what uh, let's say I, I try to bring children's books and comics together. Um, uh, we will see. I, I hope so. I hope that Samanda will stay because, I mean, it's a legacy and it's an accumulation of experiences uh, that are very, very various and uh, um, very, um, as well, very um, uh, particular and individual. So, um, Definitely, I hope that it stays, but I, I'm not sure what I will do. Maybe I will, uh, I will grow a farm, or <laughs> You'll I be don't a reader. know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, hopefully, I will stay. Uh, I will stay. I will stay awake and uh, ever changing. You know, yeah. and this is something I've I've seen so far that life is always uh, bringing new opportunities. It's always yeah. that uh, there's always a spring. You know, there's always a spring ahead. Yeah, right. Right after the winter, um, yeah, I, my favorite, one of my favorite lines from a past interview is this woman Saad Amri, who is a Palestinian architect, who you probably know, and uh, a writer, and she's a huge inspiration to me. And I was uh, interviewing her, and I said, you know, Saad, you you're in your seventies, and you've how have you managed to have these three distinct careers? And without missing a beat, she says, so far. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I believe that. I really strongly believe that. She's so funny. Um, <laughs> uh, she's really, really funny. Um, you were mentioning, uh, mentioning animation and mentioning the war. Um, and I was looking at this uh, animation that you have online. And I was uh, really... I'll turn off the sound, but uh, I was really wondering, you know, when you put stuff like this together, 
Um, how emotional is it from the very beginning, Anna? It, it these it it seems therapeutic in a way, um, but it also seems really, really, really hard to do. Um, and so, how do you approach stuff like this? I think that uh, you know, when you author something, especially that this is based on a poem, uh, the poem came came alone, came of course after a lot of work and research and accumulation and ideas and all of that. But uh, it came one day uh, as it is one text, and then I started building on it. In the beginning, I wanted to do characters and uh, something that looked more like Disney characters with the. Uh, uh, proportionate uh, uh, figures and uh, based on the uh, classical uh, cell by, uh, uh, frame by frame animation, um, but uh, but then I felt that the the feel was not there, and I I isolated myself. This was uh, done physically during and after the period of 9/11. So it was also a period that was highly intense, uh, emotionally intense. Um, um, and I was very vulnerable. So I needed uh, something to, to, um, to rely on. And these drawings were, were, were this reliance. The, the work in animation is an accumulation that is uh, um, very hard because you have to draw and draw and draw and draw and then after you know hours and hours of work, you see it moving and becoming magic and coming to life. And I think this that, that was the, the, the therapy, you know, the the learning how to be patient with every drawing and uh, and then seeing it uh, come to life. Um, it gave me a lot of a uh, huge push, you know, it gave me um, something great to rely on after the because I was also in New York during 9/11 and I witnessed the buildings fall and it was difficult for me and it was a difficult time. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I can imagine that it must be, you know, like th going through your work in preparation for the interview. You know, there's like all this stuff you know, 2006 and, uh, and giving, uh, understanding, uh, 9-11 and processing the 1975 to 1990 civil war and, and Halle, what's going on now. Do you, when you look at your work, do you see it in those phases or similar phases? Like, oh, this is me thinking through that, or are they just two parallel timelines that don't necessarily have to inform the other no, I see it actually as part of the artist movement in Lebanon. When I did this, it was in 2002, and uh, it was the, really the start of artists doing things related to war. Um, there was an exhibition in Sanaya. There were different things in, um, in the Goethe Institute. And so uh, people were doing things around me. Of course, uh, when I did it, um, I, it was a, the, the, the narrative of this film was based on an interview I made with a lot of people from my generation, asking them, what are the images that remind you of war? What are the sounds that remind you of war? What are, I wanted to do something that was collective. And, um, and for this, I, I, I wanted to, to gather all these uh, words and all these uh, concepts and ideas from from the people who, who lived the same thing I did so that I can create something that would, uh, would be heard uh, at that time. Because 2002, sometimes I had the action, why are you working on war? Aren't you fed up with it? You know, you've lived it so many, so many years. Why do you want to talk about it? Don't you want to do something, uh, I don't know, more related to... I forgot now, but yes, not Cute, to war. love, love, <laughs> nature. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I am a generation who listened to Ziad Rahbani and to the, to, to the, all the, his, uh, his plays that were about war. And it was uh, being abroad also, you listen back to all the Rahbani's uh, uh, music and you have this nostalgia, especially the first time when you leave 
So also it was um, it was a necessity. It was really a necessity to to write about what I have uh, experienced and what my generation had experienced during the war. The movie uh, talks about the daily things. It doesn't talk about the politics, the the events that happened, but it really talks about people who live on the war and how they lived. You know, the displacement, uh, the need to go and get water, the separation of the two cities. Of um, you know, it's it's that running under the 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 bombs. Yeah, it's you know I feel like sometimes I see people's art and it's overly nostalgic sometimes it's overly angry uh not i mean over is my own judgment but for the work that i see your work seems like this balance of anger and nostalgia at the same at the same time there's like um is that how you feel or am i mis misinterpreting this i think that um you know um I think that I, for this movie, I put a lot of my emotions in it and my feelings. Yes, and uh, when I watched it, when I watch it again, I I relive it as well. I think that um, I am um, probably I am I'm scared to hurt with the images. You're scared to uh, to hurt with the images. Yeah, especially a generation that was hurt from these images. Yeah. Yeah, they're heavy. They're heavy. They're heavy. Heavy memories. Um, and it's um, it's it's their memories. I don't feel like are like largely processed. You know, because the 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 way the '90s played out, um, and definitely into the early 2000s or just to sweep everything under the rug, right? To, to try to delete that memory as quickly as possible, clear the cookies, <laughs> delete the cash, right? Um, and not actually sit and process what the previous 15 years, let alone the 50 years be before that. Um, and to actually like think through, you know, that, that pain and, and that, um, trauma yeah and yeah, yeah. i start with dedicating this movie to my nephews and nieces yeah. and because they didn't know anything about the war we lived uh, my siblings lived and i was surprised my siblings never talked about them and i realized that it was so difficult for parents to tell their children yes we lived the war and it was difficult uh, showing them images or telling them about details that are harsh um and i thought this was an important uh, narrative to do. Um, instead of the film, I was I wanted to make a game. I was in uh, media studies, in design and technology, and I was learning web design and Java and programming languages. And I wanted to do a game, but then I realized that their generation had no idea. And I felt like, you know, there was something I had to do. Uh, there was something missing that uh, people who knew how to draw had to fill. Yeah, it's all. You're uh, almost I mean, like, the debate, yeah. the debate of the of the of the history of the war in schools is still uh, ongoing. Um, yeah. Every year, I think the, the the committee meets and they discuss what what can we do, what we do, what history we tell, what do we tell. But uh, this is history now. It's twenty years, uh, twenty or more. Thirty, thirty years. <laughs> 30 years, uh, and uh, I mean, how will they, how the new, how will the new generation learn from our mistakes yeah. and learn and know what it means to live in the war? Maybe for them it's easy, or I mean, they ha have no idea. And it's, I think it's very important to tell them, hey, no, it's, uh, it was something terrible. It destroyed our, all our city. It destroyed all our bonds. It, uh, it divided us. Uh, it uh, divided us from in, in all uh, in all different senses. Uh, we became homogeneous societies and um, uh, hating each other. And it took uh, a lot of time. As it worked uh, after the war to uh, remand all these uh, uh, divisions. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, 
do you feel like, do you ever come across people's work um, as an educator uh, of students now um, who are working through what they're going through now? I mean, you were, you know, in 1990 or you were 20 years younger um, or 30 years young, I should say 2002, you were 20 years younger, right? Um, and so the 20 year old now or the 25 year old now who's trying to dip their toe in this type of work and and create their own animations. What issues do you feel like they're working through? What are uh, what are the things, the stories that they're trying to tell? No, no, unfortunately, I'm I'm uh, I haven't been living in Lebanon for the last five years. Yeah. So uh, most of the work, uh, pedagogical work I am doing is uh, working with uh, refugees that are learning French, and I work with them on the on the. On, on making comics, on making uh, calendars, on making uh, different things related to the word and the image so yeah. that they can start learning and uh, um, uh, yeah, building their vocabulary. Um, from there, I, I couldn't say because, um, yes, I cannot really tell you what is happening now in Lebanon. Maybe next year. Okay. <laughs> Maybe next year. Inshallah. Um the last question I'm going to ask you before we do the quick Q&A to ra- and then wrap up is what advice would you give yourself? Um, you know, the, the, the student version of Dino, what advice would you give yourself uh, if you could go back and talk to yourself back then? I was, uh, I was fierce. I wanted to change the world. I was uh, aggressive. I, uh, I wanted to break things and uh, do things the way I wanted them. And uh, yes, I've learned that, in fact, I'm nobody like everybody. And uh, everybody has also the right to, to, to have the space to express themselves in the way they are and uh, uh, understand the limitation of Lebanon and uh, uh, what we can do and what we cannot do. And so my advice is just to breathe, constantly breathe and remind myself to breathe. So that they ca- I can uh, I can understand and be able to think how uh, to develop something, how to add to something, uh, instead of uh, revise it, you know, of uh, uh, refusing it and revising it from the from from zero. So in, in 2019, when you saw uh, when there were, you know tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people on the street yelling, tear it down, tear it down. Um, were you thinking to yourself, breathe a little bit. Uh, you can't tear everything down. You have to understand why it's like that. You have to understand how to move forward. That's three years ago. <laughs> Uh, three years ago, what I wanted to do is uh, to, to document what was happening. Yeah. Document was what was happening on the street and also in, in, uh, in my personal life. Uh, I include me and my sister because we had uh, two different uh, opinions and uh, uh, two different approaches towards the, the revolution and the revolutionaries. And I thought it was important also to, to include the personal in, in what was happening on the street. Yeah. So, so the comics that I made was, you know, uh, I think now it's a, it's a compilation for me. It's like a reference to what are the songs, uh, what, are, what is the sequence of what happened, um, uh, how people reacted, um, yeah. the, the, the motos that were said and written on the walls. Your work like this uh, that gets published at, at moments like that, do you feel like you're publishing it for the public or you're publishing it for yourself? And it just so if people read it, they read it, they watch it, they watch it, doesn't matter. It's not for you guys anyway. It's for me. I'm trying to work through this. Um, and uh, it's important for me to let it out. But I don't really, it doesn't really matter if people see it. Um, for the work that I've done about the revolution, no, yeah. it was not for me. It was really for the public. It was for kind of an attempt to archive what was happening. Yeah. Um, and so I was keen on doing it every other day and to really document everything, go down and see and watch and, uh, and uh, observe and uh, record. 
um, but for instance, Reba or Lebanon, I did it for me. I did it for me to understand my mom, to to rebuild my connection with her, to to um, yeah deconstruct that uh, that relationship that you know uh, young women have with their mothers sometimes uh, a clashy uh, a clashy yeah. relationship, and I think it worked uh, somehow. Um, I made a book in, uh, in Marseille called Salam, and it's a lot about uh, migration and the feeling of alienation and uh, um, uh, what it means to, to, to live and to, to be displaced and to run from war. And uh, that one, I made it also for myself to, to heal from, the, from leaving Lebanon, from understanding what it means to be Arab in France, uh, what it means to... To um, yes, to to also be among the uh, population of refugees and how and their struggles as well. Yeah, very very um, important stuff. Uh, let's let me do the quick Q and A and then we'll wrap up. Sure. Um, so, Alina, what are you reading or watching right now? Oh, I'm watching um, a series on Netflix. Uh, by Elena Ferrante, it's called the, the, the Lying of Adults. And uh, it's, a coming, it's, a, it's a coming of age of a young woman who discovers the, the, all the difficulties in her family and uh, the, the, the secrets uh, and, uh, and the past. And I'm reading the, the new book of Zena Maasri. Uh, it's a book about... Uh, the visual culture in the 60s and uh, uh, particularly interested in a collection and in, uh, in the, in the serious collection of books uh, that cool. she talks about. Uh, Did this trans- just come out? I think it came out a few weeks or a month ago. Okay, amazing. I didn't know about it. I love Zaina's work. Yes, amazing. Uh, yeah. She's an amazing uh, um, writer and her books yeah. are a great reference for uh, graphic designers and uh, yeah. that's people who are interested in visual culture. Okay. Um, who would you love to shadow for a day, past or present? Shadow? What do you mean shadow? To be in their place? No, no. To be with them for a day. Uh, be their shadow. Oh, um, Past or present? <laughs> uh, it's funny because uh, I, I feel like I need to be alone. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> um, but I think that, uh, well, I would love to be with uh, David Bowie, uh, to be a shadow of David Bowie for a while. This is someone who... You know, gave me a lot as a teenager, and then uh, as he grew and I grew, I learned to see what an art, what can an artist, uh, uh, what an art, how an artist can uh, uh, not necessarily identify with a with a uh, visual identity, but be in constant change of that. Yeah. And uh, as a designer, I think yes, it. Uh, um, it gave me a lot of inspiration. Um, cool. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> what do you think people most misunderstand about your work? Hmm, I think that um, some of my work is a little bit ambiguous. Like, like, uh, like I am. I, I have to say there are a lot of things that I have a difficulty to, to express. And um, probably this is why I use images and text. So, yeah. yes, I think that uh, it's maybe they maybe they have to understand the ambiguity or accept the ambiguity to accept the the, the book. You know what I mean, or the yeah. the text. Um, sure. I think it's ambiguity. Uh, I have to say, I embrace it. I learned to embrace it and to accept it. Uh, um, I'm not a very clear person. Uh, um, I, I lived in different places. I, uh, I lived many different lives and identified with many different uh, nationalities and positions. So, yes, I am um, always willing also to revise myself and to 
to yeah to to revise myself so i think that ambiguity might be difficult for a reader yeah. uh, maybe i may also a difficult reader <laughs> but uh, yes the, i mean this is my work so Um, last one is whose work do you admire or are inspired by in or outside of your profession? Mm, I think that, um, of course, there are a lot of people who, that I admire and that I am inspired by. I think that over the years, you know, the, this uh, feeling of sublimation that we have when we look at a work of art, uh, Um, we don't have it uh, um, easily. We have it maybe once or twice every year, uh, maybe once a year, and then we have this feeling of uh, awe. And um, I have to say, the, the first time I felt it was with my colleague Omar Khouri when I saw his painting, and I was like, um, I couldn't breathe uh, because it was so beautiful for me. And with that, I've learned to... Um, to to, to, to um, how, how do I say, trace it when I feel it uh, with other people's work. Yeah. Um, I was very much inspired by the work of Linda Berry and Julie Doucet, who were, you know, um, women comic artists who were uh, very blunt about their work, very honest, uh, non-apologetic. Uh, their courage really was uh, very inspiring to me. Uh, coming from Beirut, where we have to be nice little girls and be polite and uh, and quiet, and I was struggling with that. So I think women who are, you know, fejrat, uh, and they say in Arabic fejrat, these are the women who inspire me. Uh, um, uh, I have to maybe uh, balance balance something out because uh, <laughs> I need to be functional and. Uh, and uh, productive, but I think that, uh, yes, there is a reason uh, for, their, for, the, for the anger uh, that comes out, and uh, um, I think that uh, these are the women that I, uh, you know, open my ears to try to listen to, try to, to understand where is this pain coming from, where is this anger coming from, and what can we yeah. do with it? Amazing. Um, so... Lena, thanks so much for doing this. I really am. I've been a, such a fan of your work for so long. It's uh, it's kind of, uh, I'm a little beside myself that we're able to talk. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. The The questions were so heck, surprising and challenging and made me think also <laughs> about myself and uh, about my work. Uh, it's been great. Uh, Mikey, so thank you. If Any of you listening um, want to connect with Lena, you can find her online. Um, Samandal Comics is very easy to find online. Uh, what What Comics is W A T W A T C O I C O M I C S uh, on social media. And um, again, this has been a real privilege. Thanks so much, Lena. Thank you, um, and uh, all the best uh, to Africa. It's such a great initiative, Hanjad. Hopefully. <laughs> Uh, 20, 40 years from now, It's when you are 70, <laughs> <laughs> we'll be looking again and again and uh, meeting new people and their great work. Thank you. Thanks so much.